Trop Brillant is a very loving kind of ballet. You have a man and a woman in a very loving gestures. She's thanking him for all he's doing for her, and they are having joy in the beauty of this music. He didn't tell me, but apparently he said, I put everything I knew about classical ballet into 13 minutes of this Tchaikovsky score. And you know, as we were working on it, I was saying to my husband last night, I'd, I'd really forgotten how beautiful it is, this Allegro Brillant, and how it does encompass everything. Finally, when she got to the finale and was starting all of the Padre Cheval thing, and I thought, he even put all of that in, how important. The beauty of the arabesque, the beauty of the Ale Sugon, you know, and the beauty of breathing when you dance. So important, so important. He could make each one of us, by certain gestures, become more beautiful. He says, you take a beautiful woman, and she becomes more beautiful. And of course, the same thing was true of the man. But he had this incredible ability to understand how women work on point. And he talked, you know, he could work with our feet, as we talked about the Padishaval, how important it is for a woman, especially, stepping on point on a beautiful straight knee. I mean, never, unless it's asked for in modern dance to step on a bent knee in some way, but this. And what, but what he really worked on was epaulement, the shoulders, the mo movement of the shoulders. You know, he never stood in front of us and showed us. He would stand facing that way, and we would have to, all of us, would look in back of him and try to emulate what he was doing. He would take each finger and he would say, now it's like a piece of sculpture. Each finger is shown. In other words, be aware of your hands. Be aware of your arms. Pour des bras, movement of the arms, breathing here. People sometimes would talk about eyes. Oh, the eyes must do this. He said, no, the eyes come as a result of what you have done down here. And finally, what you are looking at, you in the audience, I know I am, I'm looking at the face of the dancer. They must be vulnerable. If they're not vulnerable, there's no mystery, there's no poetry. He would never talk about ballet. If you wanted to talk about ballet, he'd start telling you how to make Russian cutlets or how to prepare a nice salad <laughs> or grow flowers. But he would never talk about ballet, only in the studio. He would demonstrate, and then you'd finally say, Oh, I realize what he's been trying to get me to do. Suddenly, from a whole summer of learning Pas de Cheval, how a ballerina steps on point, um, elongating, as you saw with Diana, how the leg was elongated with that Pas de Cheval movement into arabesque and the breathing. Suddenly, I was doing, I don't know if you've ever seen the ballet, Ballet Imperial, which the leading role has a whole variation, as the Sugar Plum Fairy does. The whole way of moving your legs. It's, uh, and I was suddenly doing ballet imperial. They talk about the Balanchine style. Yes, there's a certain Balanchine, maybe a way of moving quickly. But within his repertoire of the genius of his invention, there are so many different styles. The Allegro Brillant is very lyrical. The Padidis is a majestic bravura kind of thing. Even in Allegro, when she does this bravura variation, it's still not what you would call a bravura variation. He was a poet. George was a poet and a musician and the greatest dance maker that ever lived.